the first time in the history of June, a Category 4 hurricane has formed in the Atlantic Ocean, and this storm is going to bring a ton of problems to areas like the Lesser Antilles, eventually through parts of the Greater Antilles, and then this could eventually impact areas in the United States. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about this hurricane and why this is really that big of a deal here as we are just at the end of June, and something like this has never happened in the recorded history of the Atlantic tropics. So let's begin with what Hurricane Barrel looks like right now, which right now it looks crazy on the infrared imagery. If you remember, we had a video like a few hours ago uploaded, and this was only a Category 2 hurricane as of this morning, and yesterday morning it was a tropical storm. This has rapidly intensified in very warm Atlantic Ocean waters and is really quickly barreling, literally, off to the west towards the Lesser Antilles, where it is now formed a very definitive eye, and it has a ton of thunderstorm convection right around the eye of this, which means that it is a very intense hurricane right now. Now, as mentioned before, Hurricane Barrel is an unprecedented hurricane. We do not see stuff like this hardly ever in June. We don't ever see Category 4 hurricanes, and so this is just off the charts. I mean, look at the eye right now on this storm. Again, the ocean temperatures are just so warm. It's a very low shear environment, so everything's really favored right now for this hurricane to become potentially a catastrophic one as it goes po towards parts of the Lesser Antilles. And those impacts to the Lesser Antilles, like flooding, significant storm surge, and very very high hurricane force winds are all in the forecast over the next 48 hours. Here's another view on the infrared imagery over the last several hours and just again notice how fast it's organized. From last night this again just looked like a category 2 hurricane. Didn't look like it would get too crazy but again rapid intensification has happened and we've seen this a lot over the last several years. Whenever a hurricane goes into the Gulf of Mexico for example this is very common especially in August and September. Again we are in the end of June. Something like this again just does not happen really ever, especially during this time of the year. And here's the last shot again on infrared imagery of this particular hurricane. Again, just notice how definitive this eye is right now. Lots of convection around this as well. All that red and dark red that you are seeing, that is actually a really definitive area of really tall thunderstorm activity. So we have an eye wall forming around this. And so really catastrophic impacts right now are expected to parts of the Lesser Antilles. Now, as mentioned before, Hurricane Barrel has become a Category 4 hurricane. You'll notice that it says 100 120 miles per hour, but as of 1135 Eastern Time, which was about an hour ago from when I'm recording this, it was upgraded to a Category 4 hurricane, according to aircrafts that were able to go into the storm, basically the hurricane hunters observing those winds being around 130 miles per hour. Notice over the next 24 hours, it will be making an approach to areas in the Lesser Antilles, and unfortunately, a ton of rain's going to fall here, significant storm surge, and very high hurricane force winds are all in the forecast. The only good news about this hurricane, which there's usually no good news with hurricanes at all, but the good news is that this is not a slow moving hurricane. It is going to be moving pretty quickly off to the west, currently moving west at about 20 miles per hour, and it will be keeping that pace for the most part as it continues to move west, so the good news is that this will not be stationary, dumping 30 plus inches of rain, for example, in one specific location, which something like that can't be ruled out with this. It's just something that's not expected. Hurricane warnings are already in effect for many of the lesser Antilles areas, like St. Lucia, for example. As we go into Tuesday, this will continue to move westbound, and one key note to note here is that by Monday morning, that'll probably be the peak of intensity at around 140 to maybe even up to 150 miles per hour for sustained winds, depending on if the structure can be maintained here. If it can, it could make a run at a Category 5 hurricane. Once we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, it moves towards Jamaica, where impacts are expected there. I don't expect a landfall there, but I do think it could be close, so definitely stay weather aware if you're in Jamaica. By the time we go into Thursday, this will start to be downgraded to an actual normal hurricane, so probably Category 2. By the time we go into Thursday as it will enter more of a sheared environment, meaning that we will start to see at least some weakening. By the time we go into Friday, this is more than likely going to make landfall to the Yucatan Peninsula, but we could still see this go into the Gulf of Mexico. Notice the cone of uncertainty. It's still pretty large, so the eye of this hurricane could go anywhere in this area. It could go out towards this area, like, you know, for example, Louisiana. It could also just go directly west into Mexico. It's going to depend a lot on how strong this ridge is back over near Florida and where it's exactly positioned. If it moves further back to the east, there's more of a likelihood that this would go towards Louisiana.
Louisiana, maybe even Mississippi, or even parts of Texas. But if it's a stronger ridge and it's a bit further west, I wouldn't be surprised if it went just right into Mexico. Worst case scenario is if this goes into the Gulf of Mexico, obviously. So that's going to be something to really watch for over the next several days. Here's the forecasted rainfall back over in the Lesser Antilles. So St. Vincent and as well as the Barbados are going to be really hit hard by this with lots of rainfall. Upwards of 8 to 10 inches locally of rain will be a possibility. So definitely please make sure that you're staying above ground if at all possible. It's going to be a very dangerous situation for those that live in these areas. Now this is the latest intensity guide from several different computer models all plotted onto one chart. And just notice almost every computer model does bring this to a middle level category for hurricane. So it is expected to again continue to intensify over the next 24 hours. But keep in mind, this particular run does not show it as a category four hurricane at this time. So there is a possibility that we actually could see this being stronger than any single computer model on this because the computer model is taking in whatever data is currently available. And it's actually been upgraded about 10 miles per hour since then. So this could actually be stronger by the time we go into late tonight and as well as into tomorrow morning. This is what Hurricane Barrel looks like in terms of the spaghetti models. So just basically plotting a bunch of different computer models onto one graphic. And notice how the consistency is there all throughout the Caribbean Sea. Very good news that this is not expected to take a turn towards Florida, at least, for example. But the thing we're going to have to watch for is as this goes towards the Yucatan Peninsula, things get a lot more dicey. It could go west, as I mentioned before, depending on how strong that ridge is. It could also go off to the northwest and eventually to the north, maybe going towards Texas or Louisiana. Now, I'd say overall, the chances of this going right into Mexico right now for a direct landfall after it goes into the Gulf is probably about a 70% chance. I'll give it about a 30% chance at this point that it either goes towards Texas or Louisiana or in a very rare instance towards Mississippi, which I don't expect, but I think that's still a very low possibility at this point. Really can't rule it out quite yet with this particular hurricane. And this is what we're looking at in terms of the ensembles, and this is just kind of a more broad spectrum of what could also happen. Again, notice there are a couple outliers that bring this towards like Mississippi or even Louisiana, but as of right now, the general consensus is that this will more than likely go towards Mexico or Texas or Louisiana. Now, for those wondering, is this hurricane going to be as intense in the Gulf of Mexico? And if it hits Texas or Louisiana, will it have the same impacts as the Lesser Antilles? Well, let's kind of bring you through two different computer models, and I'll give you more of an indication of whether that'll happen or not, which personally, I don't think it's going to happen like that. So let's kind of go through the European model first. This is what it looks like by the time we go into Wednesday morning. Again, notice how intense this hurricane is. Pressure level down near 968 millibars. That is a really strong hurricane still. By the time we go into Thursday, notice how that pressure starts to increase just a little bit, not a much, but just a little bit. So I do expect this to go on a small weakening trend, but not much, just enough for this to probably go down to either a, either a low-end Category 3 or a high-end Category 2 hurricane. By the time we go into late Thursday, this will start to approach areas like the Yucatan Peninsula. The European model actually has this intensifying by then, which it's possible, but I feel like the shear might just be strong enough to kind of rip this a bit apart and kind of lower the wind speeds at least a little bit. Once we go into Friday, it makes landfall there, and then the European model from here brings this into the southwest Gulf and has it make landfall in Mexico as still a hurricane. So that'll be something to watch for. Now the GFS model on the other hand, which many other computer models also show this, it eventually goes towards the Yucatan Peninsula. The GFS model weakens this by a lot more than the European model down to a thousand millibars and then it eventually goes into the Gulf and eventually would go towards Mexico or Texas. So that's what the GFS model is thinking. Now personally, I do not think that if this hurricane goes into the Gulf it's going to be as strong as it currently is unless it slows down a lot. It stays in a very favorable warm water environment, and there's also a low amount of shear. It's going to be a really contingent sort of threat, where I don't think it's going to happen unless we have almost everything perfectly lined up here. So I think overall, I would not be super concerned if you're in Texas or Louisiana, but I would still be monitoring this closely. There's no reason to panic at this point. Just stay weather aware, stay hurricane aware, if you will, and make sure that you're monitoring the tropics very closely with either the National Hurricane Center website or subscribe to our channel, and we'll be keeping you posted with the latest with Hurricane Barrel.